Hello and welcome back. This is Arun Patwardhan and today I will be talking about documenting scripts. As you must have observed, our script has already grown to a fairly large one. It still performs the same task we intended it to perform, but there are many more features and capabilities in it. As our script grows, it becomes more and more difficult for us to understand what is happening and why. Of course, since we have written the script, it is a lot easier for us to understand. But let's suppose there is a colleague of yours that is reading the script. They might have a much more difficult time trying to understand the purpose of the script. In fact, even if you attempted to read your own script, say after a gap of six months, you will take some time understanding the reason why you wrote a piece of code. A good way to address these issues is to document your code. Documentation gives the creator of the script a chance to explain in simple terms what he or she intends to do and potentially why they, they did a particular thing. With that in mind, we will be looking at how we can improve our script and provide some useful information. We will be looking at three basic aspects of documentation. First, we will look at how to put comments in the script. Next, we will use comments to put some information about our document. Lastly, we will look at how we can provide help about our script. Comments are lines of text that are ignored by the interpreter. These lines would contain information that we want to provide. All comments begin with the hash or pound symbol. Anything that follows after the symbol is ignored. Every line in the script requires its own hash symbol. If you are using a special editor, then you will observe that the comments typically have their own color. Let us now modify our script to see this in action. If we want to add comments here, all we do is go to the line we want and put a hash symbol in there. This will place or tell the interpreter that this line is to be ignored. Now we are free to go ahead and put the text we wish in here. So for example, I could put the name of the person who wrote the script. Uh, I could write the date when this was written. I could also mention contact details. I can write whatever I want in plain English text. The interpreter is not going to treat it as commands that need to be executed. One of the nice things that we can use comments for, as we just saw, is to put documentation in there. So for example, we could mention that these are variables that we will be using in our scripts. Um, these are the names of the folders in our script and so on. I'll be showing you a complete script with the documentation in a moment, but just to highlight a few points, notice I can write multiple lines of text, each line has its own hash, and I can put whatever I want in there. So that's a good way of quickly putting some comments in our script. We've added some comments for different actions in our script, but that is not the only information. There is so much more that we can add and provide about our script. This is what is called as documentation, and we provide this via comments. There are many parts to this. Let us have a look at some of these parts in detail. Ownership. This is where we provide information about the person who originally created the script. There might be more than one author involved. Also, it would be nice to maintain a history of people who've modified the script in any way. Legal disclaimers and license terms. This is where you specify any disclaimers or warnings that you wish to provide to users of the script. You may also include license terms in case you wish to 
share the script with a wider audience. Usage. Use this section to provide information about how the script should be used. You could also provide information about the location of the script on the computer. Installation. This is where information for placing the script in the correct place with the correct permissions are provided. Warnings. The idea behind this section is to provide the user information about possible issues with the script. Some examples of this would include bugs, edge cases, expected or supporting assets, anything that is necessary for the script to run without issues. Description. Of all the pieces, this is one of the most important components. This section actually describes the scope and purpose of the script. Anyone who's using the script will probably be looking at this section first. Requirements. Any assets, resources, or other items that may be required to run the script. Help and support. Information about where the user of the script can get more help or how they can get more help is provided here. History. This section gives information about who modified the script, when did they do it, along with the version number. This information may also be available via version control tools such as Git. However, it may not be the case with every user of the script. In any case, it's a good idea to also keep the history in the script. There could be many more sections that might, might, might be found. It is not necessary that all the sections have to be there. Now we will go ahead and modify our script to add this information. Pretty modified our script with the necessary documentation in there, all using comments. So for example, I have a section here which lists out the name of the script, the author, contact details, date when it was created, a website potentially where they can get more information, legal disclaimer about what the user of the script needs to be aware of, uh, license terms and conditions. For example, I'm using the MIT license here, copyright information, a little bit about the script. So for example, this is version 1.3. This is the name of the script. A little description about what the script does. How do we use the script? How do you execute it? What sort of information can you provide when you run the script? What options are available? Any warnings that need to be there? We can use special characters to draw attention to that section. How and where to install the script? Any requirements? So for example, I've been testing it since Mac OS Big Sur 11.4. I am currently running Mac OS Monterey 12.5. So I'm meeting the minimum requirements there. Any dependencies? Help and support how the user could get help. For example, by using the dash H or the dash help options. We'll see that in a moment. Or potentially using a man page. We will look at how man pages are created in a later version of the blog. And the version history. Finally, we have different comments at different points. For example, telling us the version number of the script, the name of the command. We have an if condition to check for dash H or dash help as one of the arguments being passed in. And if it's one of those two, then it prints out a big message giving information about the script to the user. Dash version or dash V prints out the version number of the script. And then the rest of the script follows with comments along with step numbers in there, giving a nice flow to the users on how the script moves ahead. along with useful comments indicating that it's the end of the script. So there you go. Uh, it's pretty easy, very useful thing to do, very handy, and it provides a lot of information. We will be adding to this as we go ahead. A nice thing is to create a documentation template script ready and handy. So you can just copy it from this file and place it into all your different scripts. 
it acts as a good reference so that you don't forget any sections for any new script that you are creating. I'll be adding all this, of course, in the Git repository that's shared in the article, the link to which is shared in the article. In most situations, documentation is enough. But in some situations, it may not be possible to read the script. This could be because the user may not have permissions to read the script. Another good way to provide information would be by providing a mechanism to get help for this command. This is most commonly achieved by providing an option to, in our script, either as dash h or dash help. Our script has now been modified to support this, as we just saw. It essentially prints a message on the screen if it sees the dash h or the dash help option. There are many other ways to provide help support information to our users. Man page is a common way. While it is more common for us to use the man command, it is also possible for us to create a man page for a script. The other option is to simply place the documentation in another file, such as a PDF, or publish it to a web page. Oftentimes, script writers will simply place the documentation in the web interface for version control, much like how we've been doing in this series. In some situations, there may even be a video that is created, though this is quite rare. A video would make sense in situations where the script is quite sophisticated and has a lot of capabilities and could be used in a variety of different ways. One or more than one approach may be used to compile information about the script. So, to summarize, documentation is an extremely important part of scripting. The best way to document your code is to do it right then, from the start. Never leave it as the last or a separate activity. Remember, the user of the script will need help. They will depend on their own experience to get help. Comments, help options, man page are some of the common ways a user would attempt to get help. Making the information available using more than one approach is very useful. Going forward, we will be adding to our documentation every time we cover a new topic. Thank you.